I don't know if it's just me or if you guys have noticed this too, but it seems to be there is like an endless sea of Kydex now out there. There are so many companies making holsters, some of which are really awesome, some of which are not so awesome. But either way, the really good ones are getting quite expensive and lead times can get pretty dang long for some of those more popular brands out there. Oftentimes out there, you, the viewers, uh, come up with some really good ideas and information and stuff for videos. This is gonna follow suit. So a viewer had posted on uh, one of the videos I'd done about McKinetech holsters. And I had quite honestly never heard of them because there are just so many companies out there that make holsters these days, it's really tough to keep up with them all unless you're looking for it or you know somebody that has one or if they just happen to get in contact with you, being that I do YouTube videos. And quite honestly, you guys are the whole reason I'm here to kind of help you sort through this, all this stuff out. So being that it came from a viewer, I really was interested in getting a hold of this company and testing out their product based on the viewer saying it was pretty dang good and it was really affordable. Now I have plenty of things that cost money, but when I can save money and where I can save money, I definitely try to. And holsters is one of those things where it seems to me you can get pretty good deals on a lot of things, but then some companies can get really, really expensive. And I kind of try to shoot for that happy median when it comes for a lot of stuff. You know, don't always buy the cheapest, don't always buy the most expensive. I want to get the best bang for my buck. And I'm pretty sure you guys are all on board with that because spend money where you have to, save money where you can. So this McKenna Tech holster we're going to talk about today. I should take this bad boy off. I got this for my 509 tactical here. And I'm digging this, uh, this whole setup here. So loving this gun. And I got this one specifically in that uh, kind of, uh, well, not kind of, <laughs> that carbon fiber gray. In that appendix, you know, sidecar, sidekick. This one's actually called the Kinda Flex. K-I-N-A Flex. Kinda Flex. So made up their own word for a holster, which is good. So it's got that shock cord design on it. You know, so it's kind of independent. Two pieces it can move back and forth which is very, very common these days. You know, pretty much every, seems to be every much every big holster company is doing it. But it's a good design because it's comfortable, it wears well, and it uh, fits what you need in there, especially in this case, you got those 24 round mags from FN. So that is, uh, that is pretty cool. This holster, I wanna say, is roughly around 30% cheaper than a lot of the ones out there that I've tested or I've used. Now, if your buddy Bubba makes holsters down by the river for, you know, 30, 40 dollars, that can be a good thing or that can be a good, a bad thing. Nothing wrong with companies getting started in their garage. Many amazing American companies have started there. I'm just saying in its class, which is where I'm gonna classify this, this bad boy seems to come in the kind of flex from McKinetech about 30% cheaper than a lot of the bigger names out there. Not a knock on your friend Bubba. Sometimes Bubba just doesn't make the best holsters, believe me, because I've bought holsters from the Bubbas too. And after that viewer brought McKinetech up, I got a hold of them and they did send this out to the channel for free. I specifically wanted one for my gray 509 in that carbon fiber gray because I'm liking this thing more and more and it is hot. And uh, if you think this is hot, let me get an amen in the comments and definitely hit that subscribe button. I wanna get into this thing and show you the craftsmanship and kind of how it lines up against one of the other big names in the industry. And then we're gonna talk about price and all the options that are available for this thing after we get into it and I kind of show you the quality that it has uh, going on in here because it's pretty dang good, especially for the price point when we get there. And that other big name is gonna be tier one concealment because that seems to be a lot of people's favorites right now. So we are gonna dead nuts compare this to the T1C right now. All right, so let's talk about this kind of flex here from McKenna Tech. You can see their logo right there on the holster that I got from my 509, which is just a mean little girl, especially with them big old mags in there like that. Well, let's just take an overall look at the quality and the fit and the finish work here. And then we're going to go ahead and compare it to the T1C. This seems to be a favorite of a lot of people out there. So it is that same kind of design. It's got the shot cord in here. T1C has this. A bunch of people have this kind of design. So overall, the fit of it, very good. You saw that it uh, locked in there quite well. You're not going to have to worry about that coming out. You do have the claw on there to aid in concealment. You do have some tension adjustment right there on that side as you can see uh, you do have tension adjustment on this side for the magazine and then obviously these two sections are solid mounts so there's no adjustment right there not bad at all you have two clips you do have one level of adjustability there and then the magazine side is just standard where it is at so i do like some adjustment up and down sometimes this one does fit quite well the way it is but that's just an option that I generally like to see. You see that uh, the carbon fiber Kydex, this was a standard option for the price that we'll talk about in a minute. 
There was no upcharge for that. That's pretty cool because most people charge at least 10, sometimes 20 bucks for a nicer pattern like that. You can see the mold and the form that they're using is quite good. Looks like it's probably vacuum sealed. I don't know 100% sure because it's got some pretty good definition in it. Could be press fit, could be vacuum, not 100% on that. Got this for the TLR1, obviously, so it's gonna lock onto the light. That's where it's gonna secure. So let's look at that edge work. So you can see in there, nice edge work. Um, it's polished up nicely. There's not bandsaw marks left in there. It's pretty dang clean lines. One little part right there in the corner, but that is really probably gonna be the roughest area to try and get something to sand it out or clean it up. That's pretty good. Um, the craftsmanship on this, you know, even down in here, they're using good rivets on it. Um, some people use a cheaper version of rivets and I've seen them cracked and broke when they were brand new. These seem to be a higher quality one, uh, much like some of the other companies are using. Uh, T1C even uses them right here where the screws are. Uh, so as long as they're quality, they're good, but I have seen rivets break in the past. Tight. So let's talk about how this thing fits and let's compare it to the T1C here size wise. So we can see it's dang near a one for one right there. Um, we'll swap them out top to bottom here. Really, really close on that size. Uh, I want to say there's just about no real difference. Tiny little bit, like say right here in the edge, right there, that's a little bit less material on the T1C. Um, use both of these uh, using very good clips. Uh, the Mechanitech ones are very, very nice. They do have that nice little kickback right there, so it grabs onto your belt rather than just kind of being flat. So they are going to be secure in there. It's good. You guys can see, you know, the level of craftsmanship, compare these side to side with uh, how the uh, how the Kydex has been deburred and how the Kydex has been, you know, polished out. So there's no real bandsaw marks or anything like that. Even the T1C stuff, there's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of not perfectly clean lines in it. And that's a, that's pretty good, especially for a holster that's running at this price point. It looks good, it rode good, it uh, did everything I needed to do out there. So let's go ahead, we're gonna talk about price on this, the version that's not flexible and this version, and we're gonna talk about what guns it's available for with which light combinations, because there's a lot out there to be had for this. The Kynaflex, so not kind of, Kynaflex, made up their own word. We've got two versions, of this, uh, the no flex version and the flex version. So let's talk about the cost of this one right here. 89 bucks with free shipping. And then the other one that doesn't have the flex thing, that's all one piece is 79 bucks for free shipping as of this video. So if that price changes, it's up to you to check the dates. Uh, I don't control your prices if they change them. That is pretty dang aggressive considering the T1C we looked at is right around 130, $140. You saw the craftsmanship in there. You saw pretty clean lines, a little bit of area that could have been cleaned up on, but that's the same with the T1C. Now, when it comes to bang for the buck, that's one of those things you have to weigh out. Now, I'm a huge fan of craftsmanship and that attention to detail. And I think this is pretty dang good. It's a pretty high level of craftsmanship there, especially for the price. That 89 bucks, again, that's a pretty aggressive price point for what you're getting in this package. The size uh, is pretty good when you compare it to like the T1C or the other kind of, you know, kind of slim designed, you know, two stage setups like this where you got a mag and the weapon, especially when you got that TLR1HL on there, which is not the smallest light to conceal at all, but still does a very nice job and it has been very comfortable the time that I've been wearing this. So let's go ahead and talk about those options they have for it because I got this one for the 509 Tactical with that uh, TLR1HL on it, which is pretty much my chosen light for most of my setups unless I need super concealment. Now they had a really good amount of options. Of course they had Glocks, they had Smith and Wessons, they had CZs, they had the Canic TP9 SFX in there, they had a Staccato in there, they had some 1911 options. I think they had some shields in there. They had a really good array of firearms, the FNs and stuff, but they had a really good array of light options too. They had some of the Olight stuff in there, PL Valkyrie 1, 2, the minis. Uh, they had the Streamlight stuff in there, they had some Surefire stuff in there. It was a pretty good amount of options especially compared to some other companies. And a lot of people have been asking for holters for the Olight stuff. Well, it seems to be the McKenna, uh, McKenna Tech is doing a lot of Olight stuff for you out there if you're into those Olights. So being that this thing comes in literally like almost 50 bucks less than some of the other big names out there, and probably 20 to 30 uh, less than some well-known names out there, that's pretty aggressive. It's a, it's a pretty good holster. And I gotta say the craftsmanship is pretty good. I'd give it about a seven, six and a half, seven out of 10 as compared to 
some really high end stuff. And then the price is obviously like a 10 out of 10, 89 bucks for a holster that's that good. Two week lead time right now, I promise you that's gonna go up once people start finding out how affordable these are and the quality is pretty good. And like I said, save money where you can. That's what I look for. I would have no problem buying another one of these. It's comfortable, it's gonna last, it's got good craftsmanship to it. And uh, that price is really tough to scoff at when you're looking for a holster especially if you've got multiple setups. Now I do only have the sample size of one, which is the one they sent me, which he knew I was gonna do a review on. He did provide it for free, like I said already. So hopefully this is the quality that comes out on all the holsters, but he knew I was a reviewer and he did uh, send this to the channel knowing that I was going to do a review on it. But hopefully we can trust that craftsmanship is gonna follow through with the ones that everybody else out there would order. So you guys get out there and have some fun. Make sure you uh, like the video, hit that subscribe button and turn those bell notification icons on. You guys have some fun, you stay dangerous and I will see you all on the next one.